talking with Mr. Uh, Willie Raffogel from uh, the Met Council, an exclusive interview for VinNews.com. Okay, can you explain what the Met Council does? Sure. Met Council is, full name is Metropolitan Council on Jewish Poverty. Met Council is like our nickname, but everybody calls us that. Uh, Met Council tries to help alleviate the problems of people who are poor and people who are needy. You don't have to be poor necessarily to be needy. As we know in the Jewish community, many people who are middle class are not living at a quality of life that many of their neighbors who are middle class are because their expenses are so much greater. Living in a Jewish community, sending their children to yeshivas, making Passover. All those things combine to give them a more difficult quality of life. So we try to serve them as well. We build affordable housing, especially for senior citizens all over the city. We have the largest kosher food pantry system in the United States. We're proud to partner with Masbia in the kosher free restaurants uh, through four different neighborhoods. And uh, we do job training, career counseling, handyman services to seniors and the disabled so they have safety and security in their homes. And our crisis intervention uh, benefits and entitlements dealing with domestic violence and kids at risk and making sure people are able to have a decent quality of life serves close to 100,000 people a year. And um, how many distributions uh, the Met Council uh, do for this uh, Passover season? This Passover season, we anticipate by the time we finish on Sunday that close to 50,000 households. That could be a household of one, it could be a household of 10 or more. 50,000 households will actually get Pesach food. We are currently just under 3 million pounds of food for Pesach that was distributed. Uh, in addition, close to a million dollars in food vouchers so that people can actually go out and get things, particularly the proteins that we don't distribute in our food pantry system, like meat and chicken and fish, so they can have that for their family. But the statistics tell one story. It's the individual families, it's the volunteers who bring the Pesach food to these families that tell another. Uh, one of the saddest stories I heard was one this week when I heard from a volunteer who told me about visiting an elderly woman living alone and they just brought her a bunch of things for Pesach from matzah to bottled goods and canned goods and box goods. But before they left, she asked them to do her a favor. Now keep in mind, this was five or six days before the first Seder night. She said to the volunteer, could you please open the cans? My arthritis doesn't let me open the cans. So she had to open up the cans five days before Pesach because she had arthritis. We were able to arrange to connect her to a local shul so she was able to go to a more communal seder. But the kinds of stories, the compelling situations that old people, young people, families in crisis find themselves in, Erev Pesach is just extraordinary. The nightmare that we have is that while we're able to go and help many of them, that we can't get to so many who may not have the wherewithal to find us, who may be homebound and nobody knows about them. We, we want to know about them. If there's some way, if anybody knows of people who are living alone or need help, we want to know. They can call us, 212-453-9500. They can go to their local Jewish Community Council. They could let our friends at Masbia know about it, and we'll be able to... How, how is the Met Council funded? Like, Where do you get the food sure. from and the money from? Most of our funding from, comes from government, about over 90% of it comes from government, the remaining 10%, a little less than 10%, we raise, and we're driven to raise as much as we can to be able to feed people for Pesach, to feed people all year long. Every month, 15,000 households, that's one five, get food from us, non-perishable foods mostly. Uh, every month, you know, every night, Masbia is serving hundreds of people in this, their four locations across the city to make sure they have a nutritious hot meal and are able to have the respite from a difficult life. And how do you deal with the large variety of needs and cultural differences within the Jewish community? Sure. Because you have different needs for Sephardim, Ashkenazim, Litvish, Hasidish. Okay. We, we try to be very, very sensitive to the different needs. We talk to the community councils that we have and the rabbis in different communities to make sure that we're sensitive that the right kashris of the right products go to the right communities and that we speak to those people even in the same communities who may have different needs so that if some people in Queens and the Baharian community have one particular minhug and their elderly friends who may be Holocaust survivors living just a couple of blocks away but going to the same kosher food pantry have different minhug for Pesach that they will get what they need. 
and how far in advance do you need to uh, stop preparing for these distributions? We, we actually start preparing for Pesach in January when we begin the ordering process of things that we need and going to companies that actually donate things for us. We shift our warehouse completely, usually about a month before Pesach, because the truckloads, and there's uh, uh, some interesting traffic jams that occur on King's Highway near our warehouse. Our warehouse is in Canarsie on Preston Court, and we've had situations where 15 tractor trailers line up on King's Highway to get to our warehouse to drop off the kosher for Pesach food, because that's the only time of year that it's so heavily concentrated into a short time. And how many pounds of food did he move uh, this year? In total? In total. Uh, Pesach so, is yeah. close to th uh, 3 million pounds of food. In total, is probably about 10 million pounds of food over the year. Pesach is just extraordinary in terms of demand because our clients who need help all year long have things that remain, especially non-perishable things. But Pesach, everything has to go, and they basically need everything fresh. Now, for the people that wouldn't uh, be eligible... Uh, quote unquote, for, for the funding that the Met Council gives. Is there anything that the Met Council uh, can do or does do that we don't know about in, in, lo in getting the prices sure. to be lowered during Pesach? Well, and, and, like, is there anything you could do also, like, with the price gouging, or, like, do you check up on well, those things? We, we, we certainly talk to elected officials, we talk to the Consumer Affairs Department, we have a very close relationship with uh, the Consumer Affairs Commissioner and have, on occasion, referred cases to them. However, the people who are not may not even be eligible for food stamps still are eligible for our food pantry network and for Masbia. They can come to us for food anytime, even if they're above the eligibility of food stamps um, or any other program. The Met Council is very efficient with everything they do. Now, is, is there anything that, the, that, again, can be done as on a wide basis with buying power? Because if, you, if you're sure. servicing 100,000 people, sure. that's, a, that's a lot of uh, money. Uh, uh, you know, there's no question we're able to get extraordinarily uh, reasonable prices cheaper than anywhere else. Uh, in fact, we were consulting recently with one major wholesaler about the price of eggs for Pesach so that we were able to distribute eggs, uh, which is not an easy thing to distribute, by the way. And um, we found out that we were able to get it, I think it was for... 90 cents per dozen and the wholesaler said to me i don't know how you're getting it for 90 cents a dozen it costs him a dollar a dozen and you know it was an extraordinary finding to realize that we were able to negotiate such a reasonable price because we were dealing with a national uh, egg dealer so that we were able to make that kind of a difference um one of the you know most compelling thing about pesach and about what happens is some of the clients um a single mother with breast cancer that came to us asking for help for Pesach. And it wasn't just about getting food, but it was about getting some financial assistance so she was able to buy uh, her daughter the clothing for Pesach to go to shul. Um, you know, there are people who take care of elderly parents who come to us because their elderly parents were once able to financially help them and their family, and now those elderly parents don't have the resources to take care of them and then take care of themselves or take care of the, the, their family. Mm -hmm. So their family comes to us and says, you know, we need help taking care of our parents or grandparents. We're able to provide them with home care. In some cases, it may just be while they're staying uh, with their family for Pesach because they may live out of state. But trying to tailor the services combined with the food to individual instances and individual families, um, you know, it could be a range of things. It could be a family that just was evicted or was foreclosed on. We've had a couple of cases over the past couple of months where families mm -hmm. were foreclosed on. They just didn't have the income to pay for their house uh, or apartment. And we were able to find them other places to live, albeit temporary, but we're trying to help them with our Project Mahzone where we provide people with furniture and clothing. So we were able to get them furniture at least temporarily to make their, that place a home recognizing that there's still a long way to go. We're working with them. Um, the husband in that family right now is being trained by us in electronic health records management, which is one of the fastest growing fields. And he, we're fairly certain that he'll get a job. It won't pay as much as he got before the crash, but it'll give him a job, it'll give him good health benefits for his family, and hopefully they'll get back on their feet. One thing I would say is the best way to find out about my council is to come volunteer. We'd love for people to play a role, whatever they feel comfortable doing. They can volunteer with the food pantry programs and Masbia, 
so they could call us via direct also absolutely. and just say hi i want to volunteer tonight Ab absolutely we, we would love to have people volunteer like that they can become advocates everybody in our community has elected officials and it's very easy to call write or even go meet with the elected officials and say these programs are important to us and they can pick the program they're interested in if it's a food program they can tell their elected officials how important the food program is if it's a program that changes and fixes the safety and security in the apartment of a senior citizen they can tell them how important the handyman program is and so on uh, so we want people to volunteer we want people to advocate they will learn what we're able to do for so many people in need and they'll be proud of it now viewers that, that are watching this video now they're going to want to open their hearts There's a lot of good people in the jewish community yes where do they who do they call to well, donate money they can do one of two things they can call us 212-453-9500 and ask for our fundraising, or they can go to www.medcouncil, that's M-E-T-C-O-U-N-C-I-L dot org, and they can make a donation online. It's Many of the companies have been extremely supportive. Manischewitz is one of them that has recently been very supportive. Uh, Empire Foods has been extraordinary. We just recently honored at our Food for Life campaign event, Greg Rosenbaum, the CEO of Empire Poultry, and Empire a year ago made a commitment to donate 50,000 pounds of poultry product. They've donated closer to 100,000 pounds in the course of that year and are committed to doing more. Their employees um, actually greet our people, our staff, when they come to pick up the uh, poultry and whenever they can, they actually deliver it themselves, which makes it much easier for us to do the distributions that we have to do when they can send their trucks instead of us having to go and pick it up. And, and Rosenbaum and Empire have been really um, unbelievably charitable. And can you give some examples of how Met Council is efficient and how they do it also sure. and, not, and not waste well, uh, dollars? To, to give you a sense of how extraordinarily efficient it is, there are seven full-time pay, full paid employees in our entire kosher food pantry network. The rest is all done with volunteers. The actual 60 sites on a regular monthly basis and over 100 sites for Pesach that actually give out the food are staffed almost exclusively with volunteers and the people who operate the warehouse are the paid employees, the person who drives the trucks, paid employees, but only seven people gave out three million pounds of food for Pesach in a relatively short period. One of the best examples is when we see an organization that is doing an extraordinary job like Masbia has been with its uh, soup kitchens, kosher soup kitchens in Borough Park, we were able to go out and help find additional funding so that Masbia could expand from one to four. We want to be able to help those organizations that are doing a great job. Met Council is constantly on the lookout for deals where we can buy things like tuna, like other products, uh, where we can pick up extraordinary amounts because we know we'll be able to give it out during the course of the year or in some cases on, on Pesach and we're constantly shopping around and in some cases we get real terrific assistance from people like Menachem Lubinsky who run Kosher Fest. At Kosher Fest we go out there, we talk to the manufacturers, we talk to the supermarkets and wherever possible we're able to identify those people who can give us really unique opportunities. In some cases it may be private label brands but those private labels will have hashkacha and they'll be able to give it far cheaper than they might if the brand name was on the product. It, it, look, clearly in some communities, they may or may not want to have a certain brand of tuna fish. So we have to be very sensitive to those communities so that they actually get to use that which we give them. So we get different brands for the different communities. If there's something that, for example, in Williamsburg is acceptable to them, we'll make sure to get that to Williamsburg. In Flatbush, you may not have to go Lechumra like that, and we'll be able to give Flatbush something that's more popular brand name as long as it has this uh, uh, Hashkafa. So, you know, all in all, it's uh, you know extraordinary to be able to do the things that we do. Right. Now, somebody watching this who says, you know what, I, I could use the services, but I'm embarrassed. Like, what, it, It's all discreet, right? It, they all could discreet, just... all confidential. For those people who want the convenience of going to a local Jewish community council in their neighborhood, that's available to them. But if somebody wants to come into an office building in Manhattan to get the services, they can come to us here. And they can call us at 212-453-9500, tell the person who answers the phone what the issue is, how they need help, and that person will direct that call to the right person.
Okay, thank you again. I know I thanked you twice before, but I'm thanking you again for the amazing work, and keep it up. Thank you, and thank you.